if you're like me and you're a net fan, you're looking at the last three games. Of course, I'm more of a realist than most, but you look at the win against Atlanta and you start to go, hmm, next three games. You know, two bad teams and then a good team, but, you know, you're in your building. Pull together a six-game winning streak, head into this brutal trip. And you know what? We could be in first place. By the time we head west. Now, it might be a short stay, which is what I'm thinking. It'll be a short stay because, you know. But then I'm saying, you know, the first two games of the trip, Detroit, Dallas, beatable, winnable games. And then we come back to reality and we see who the Nets are. The no identity. Iron Eagle said it best. Uh, at the end of the buzzer, tough team to figure out. But really, that's not a true statement because... We do know who they are. They are who they are. They're an inconsistent, uh, can lose to anybody, can beat anybody. Of course, more likely to lose to anybody than beat anybody. I shouldn't say they can beat anybody because they can't beat, you know, San Antonio. Or they can't beat the upper elite teams in the league. They can't beat Houston. So I shouldn't say they can beat anybody because they haven't proven that. Can't beat Golden State. But they're certainly capable of losing anybody. And here you are tonight. A chance to kind of get your momentum for this last little run. Philadelphia played last night. Philadelphia stinks. 12 of 13 games they've lost. Philadelphia basically mailed it in. The Bynum situation has been brutal for them. And... They basically go wire to wire. I mean, if after a first quarter 15-8 lead was erased, you know, from the second quarter on, Philadelphia goes wire to wire, and you never felt like the Nets were in the game, even when it was four or five. You had never felt like they could get over the hump. This is the Philadelphia brutal 76ers, who stand right now at 24-39, and 39. And a very mediocre 18 and 16 home record, 18, 17 and 16 coming in. Story of this game, very simple. A horrific, a brutal, a pansy ass defensive effort everywhere on the floor for Brooklyn. Um, at one point, late in the third quarter, the Sixers were shooting just a shy, just a tad under 60%. This is a team that averages 92 points and put up 106 tonight. Uh, brutal. I mean, listen, Mirza Toledovic, I like the guy. I want to see him play. He was pathetic tonight. I don't care about the four points he had. He missed so many defensive assignments. Um... Spencer Hawes. No, not Spencer Haywood. Spencer Hawes was Tim Duncan tonight. And you know, an interesting thing. You know, we all have this Dwight Howard thing hanging over our head. And I've been pretty, ever since last year when he pulled the, the crap that he did, I've been out of him mentally. But here's a night where you, you look at Brooke Lopez and... You start to you start to think, boy. You know, look at Brooke finesse a couple of pretty turnarounds, great offensive game. Had 14 points in the first quarter and five the rest of the way. Took only a few shots. I think he took like three shots after the first quarter and six rebounds. And then the biggest play of the game was the miss by Holiday. Um, and and Hayes came away with two rebounds. Hayes. Hawes, whatever, Hayes, Hawes, 24, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. The guy was 3 assists away from a triple-double. And if you surveyed, you know, 20 NBA fans that actually follow the game, they, they, you know, he'd be the, like one of the guys, the last guys you'd mention on the Sixers. The Sixers tonight, their, their bench... Their role players killed us, and it was because of a horrific defensive performance. I don't even, not even bench. I mean, Wilkins started. Wilkins had 13 points. 
uh, much higher than his season average. Um, of course, Hawes, we mentioned the 24. Um, Wright killed us. Wright had 15 points, 6 for 10 from the floor, and a couple of killer threes. Uh, specifically, Tiletovic, brutal defensive player. The whole, the whole squad. Nobody guarded the whole night. A complete, unprofessional effort by the Brooklyn Nets. A team that absolutely just does not have balls. Doesn't have character. Now, they show it from time to time. You know, they'll show it on occasion. You know? But, you know, why they are who they are is because they don't bring it every night. I mean, you don't come in to Philadelphia... After they played, you didn't. And you, you, don't, you just don't allow a team to shoot 60% from the floor going in. I mean, there was a minute to go in a third, and it was like 59% they were shooting. I mean, ridiculous. Um, and listen, you gotta, you got to look at P.J. P.J.'s rotations are very questionable. I thought he stayed way too much with Toledovich. Let me see how many minutes he played. Uh, yeah, he played 17 minutes. And Blatch, Blatch, listen, we, we talk about Blatch a lot. Blatch either has it or he doesn't. He's either fantastic or he's brutal. And tonight he didn't have it. He was brutal. He turned the ball over three times. He missed a couple of shots. Defensively weak. Um, I thought they went too far with him too. 15 minutes, 17 minutes. They played deep into the fourth, into the fourth quarter. Brook was on the bench for uh, for a lot of the fourth quarter, and he did play 33 minutes. Of course, Wallace didn't play at all in the fourth. By the way, neither one of those guys spoke to the press after the game. So, you know, not not condoning that, but just kind of giving you an idea of uh, I'm not the only one that's head scratching with PJ's rotation. Um, the Sixers was their highest point total in two months. You know, you're going to try and convince me, Brooklyn, that you're you're going to head to the playoff stretch with some steam. And you got an eight-game trip coming up. You had these three. I asked you my last show. I said, make it where I don't do a show tonight. Make it where you beat the Sixers by 7-8. And we say, big deal, you beat the Sixers. No, here I am talking about a, a loss that you trailed the entire game. And the time that you did make a run, you allowed Spencer Hawes to get two big offensive rebounds and basically dominate. Spencer Hawes was Tim Duncan. Spencer Hawes. And like we mentioned, Wilkins was very effective, as was Wright. And of course, the rest of the Philadelphia team wasn't too bad. I mean, look at this. Look at this young 16. Turner, 16. Holiday 15 and 11. I mean, the 76ers, who stink, took it to you. And again, this is why we can't, you cannot deem the Brooklyn Nets a serious playoff team. Yeah, they're going to make the playoffs because, you know, there's eight teams and the rest stink. So they're going to make the playoffs. But where do you rank them? Where? Who do you have them beaten? You know? Who do you have them matching up well against? Who do you look at and go, oh, they'll take care of them? You, you don't. Because, you know, again, you had it. Usually the way how D. Will goes, we go. D. Will had another great performance, 10 of 19. He looked. Listen, I got my fingers crossed. I've been hard on D. Will all year, but he's looking like the guy we got from Utah right now. This is 27 and 13, six boards. He went to the goal. You know, Johnson shot the ball well, 8 of 11 for 20 points. You know, you look at him, 20, Brooke, 19, D. Will, 27, and you lose. And you lose to the Sixers. Well, what's going on? Well, it's because nobody defended. Nobody defended. And to me, I don't understand. I don't know how you don't come out with a lot of drive, with a lot of passion, a lot of fight. You know, the Sixers played last night. You know, come out early, put them put them in a ten point hole, and they'll go okay. You know, the Sixers have been playing, and even though they lost five straight, a lot of these games were where they played well. They were up most of the game and they collapsed. 
you know, and the Nets had that chance and couldn't come up with a big offensive rebound. It was the story to me that that told the whole night when Hawes grabbed the board, uh, you know, and our center gets six rebounds. You, you start to think, is Brook Lopez, you know, a, a, a center on a big time playoff team? The kind of game like tonight makes you wonder when a, when a guy like Hawes dominates him. And uh, he does a disappearing act. Now, whether or not you want to blame P.J. or him for the disappearing act, that's debatable. 14 points in the first quarter and five the rest of the way. And, uh, you know, the other guy almost had a triple-double, a guy that, you know, no one knows. So, very bad loss. Uh, shows what I've been saying all year. That Brooklyn is a hoax contender. Uh, you don't lose to the Sixers if you're a primetime playoff team in the East. doesn't happen, especially when you got 27, 20, and 19 from your big three, and you still go down handily. Leave me alone.